Pain is something that humans have always wanted to mitigate and prevent, but it's also an essential function of the body. Though unpleasant, it lets us know that something we're doing is harmful to us or alerts us to an area that needs help and attention. Nevertheless, getting rid of pain is still a goal for science, and a goal that new research has gotten closer to reaching in a surprising way. This is Unveiled, and today we're answering the extraordinary question, did scientists just discover a way to cure all pain? Do you need the big questions answered? Are you constantly curious? Then why not subscribe to Unveiled for more clips like this one and ring the bell for more thought-provoking content. With something as general, widespread, and uncomfortable as pain, you might think that scientists would have a pretty good idea about how it works and what causes it. But that's not necessarily the case. In reality, pain is still one of the biggest mysteries in medicine. Humans have always felt pain, we know that. But the explanations as to why have been varied over history. Many ancient cultures interpreted it as being divine in nature. The word pain even derives from the Latin word poena, which means punishment, and is a testament to the fact that many thought it was a process of atonement to God. Even civilizations as vast and impressive as the ancient Egyptians and Romans thought of pain as a wholly existential experience with no physical root. These beliefs have more recently been challenged by science, although the approach to pain is still an ongoing discussion. Why do some seem to feel it more intensely than others? Why is there a variety to pain, and to how it feels? And though it usually has an identifiable cause, why does chronic pain sometimes linger for seemingly no reason, defying medical knowledge? According to some classifications, Pain can even be considered a disease in and of itself under certain conditions. Still, in all cases and at the root, we today know the experience of pain is activated by the nervous system. While there's no single center for pain as such, the spinal cord is key. Here, the body receives distress signals from all parts of itself and responds by emitting glial cells, which are thought to control the levels of pain we feel. In some cases, it's by analyzing this process that we can get a better understanding as to why pain thresholds differ from person to person. Overall, drugs are currently the best option we have to try to manage that process further and thereby manage pain. But they have plenty of drawbacks to them. Alternative treatment options are always being sought. And one of the more creative routes for pain management actually involves sound. This might seem crazy at first. How could sound have an effect on the physical experience of pain? But there is seemingly a link and a strong one, as different studies have shown that sound has amazing potential. In research with plants, for example, it's been shown that by playing music, you can stimulate a plant's cells to promote faster and healthier growth. And what's more, plants apparently have musical preferences too. Studies show that they seemingly love and gain better results through classical or jazz music, but can actually be slowed down or damaged by heavy metal. We already know that sound has some effect on biological organisms then, but now it goes beyond that. It's been found that sound waves can create literal order out of chaos at the subatomic level. The vibrations of different sound frequencies can cause particles to align in specific ways in a phenomenon called cymatics. The simplest way to demonstrate this is with a stream of water or a handful of sand on a vibrational plate. Ultrasonic waves can even cause objects to levitate and some have gone so far as to claim that some of our most impressive buildings and structures, like the pyramids, may have been built by exploiting the same principles of sound. That's probably not the case in reality, but sound is still capable of more than we imagine. A new study then, led by neurologist Yun Yun Liu at the U.S. Institute of Dental and Craniofacial Research, wanted to specifically investigate how sound can affect pain in mice. For the experiment, the team injected mice with a type of red dye into their auditory cortex, the part of the brain that processes noise. The idea being that through this, they'd be able to track any noise-related brain activity. And if the auditory cortex were to connect to another part of the brain, then they would see that region light up too, thanks to the dye. Next, they, unfortunately, injected the mice with a painful solution into their paws, before watching to see whether they experienced discomfort which they'd most likely show by licking their paws. With the setup complete, the researchers introduced sound. They played the mice a variety of music at different volumes and observed the effect, finding that, surprisingly, only how loud the music was had an impact on pain tolerance. As long as the music was played at around 50 decibels, 
just above background noise, it seemingly numbed the pain the mice felt, while the genre didn't seem to matter. The thalamus is an area of the brain associated with pain and the sensation of being hurt, and there was less activity there, fewer signals being fired, whenever music was playing compared to when it wasn't. And even when the mice's paws were poked at for a reaction, they gave none, further suggesting that they actually weren't feeling pain anymore. The results shocked the team, with Dr. Liu reflecting, quote, we were really surprised that the intensity of the sound and not the category or perceived pleasantness of sound would matter, end quote. They also noted that the pain-relieving effects of the music had lasted for up to two days after it had stopped playing, which suggests a lingering analgesic, pain-relieving effect. The results suggested that music might essentially impede the ability of the thalamus to process discomfort. With the mice, there had seemed to be an active pathway between the auditory cortex and the thalamus, implying that sound could be involved in pain management in the brain. One question that science is asking now then is whether the same links could be triggered in humans. The same experiment could theoretically be run on human subjects, and there is already some precedent to suggest that sound can lessen our pain too. In the 1960s, dentists in the US ran a famous series of tests where they played music while operating on more than 5,000 patients, and they found that it was an effective pain suppressant. Similarly, more recent research into patients with fibromyalgia, rheumatic pain all over the body, has shown that music can both decrease suffering and increase mobility. Nevertheless, the how of all of this still isn't well understood. How does sound have such an effect? One possible explanation? is that we experience less discomfort whenever the brain releases endorphins as a result of the music. Another is that patients possibly become distracted by memories that the music can bring up, taking our minds away from the pain. But then again, in the experiment with the mice, it was shown that even white noise at the right levels could have a soothing effect. And there's nothing nostalgic about that. Regardless, there's big potential here and there are hopes that these results could one day lead to the development of safer pain relief treatments rather than opioids, with pills replaced by precisely managed music. We know that music is capable of activating parts of our bodies that we normally wouldn't think of. It's one reason why it has had such a role to play in more spiritual rituals and meditative practices for thousands of years. Some people can even have such intense reactions to music that they experience the polar opposite to pain upon hearing it waves of pleasure throughout the body that have been described before as skin orgasms. If this is developed into a workable pain remedy in the future then, we could soon have pain relief with zero side effects. Perhaps we'll see specialized musical rooms designed as pain relief stations, curated playlists that are clinically proven to soothe what ails you, and rock concerts being prescribed as valid treatment for injuries. Although these results might seem shocking or unbelievable, at the heart of it, we know that sound is energy. Sound also travels well through water, and since the human body is more water than anything else, perhaps it's not so shocking after all that sound could affect us so deeply. There's a way to go before the true extent of this research is known, but that's how scientists may have just discovered a way to cure all pain. What do you think? Is there anything we missed? Let us know in the comments. Check out these other clips from Unveiled and make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for our latest content.